Hello again. Discussing the subject of this video is going to be a bit like some elaborate parlour game in which we talk about and describe something without actually using the word itself. In this case, a penalty for speaking the word out loud would very likely be having this channel removed permanently from YouTube. For the word in question is what we now refer to coily as a racial slur. I am, of course, referring to the Black Labrador, which was owned by Wing Commander Guy Gibson, who led 617th Squadron in their raid on the Ruhr Dams in 1943. Very inconveniently for historians, and to the disgust of right-thinking people across the Western world, the animal's name, which was also used as a code word to signify the success of the mission, was the so-called N-word. Nothing unusual at that at, at the time, of course. Well, this, these were the days when a certain shade of brown fabric was known as N-word brown. The name of the dog is now bleeped out when the film of the Dan Busters is shown on television, and it is considered tactful to refer to the creature as Trigger when talking of it, rather than giving the correct name. After the dog died at the time of the raid, a grave was erected in its memory with an inscription which named it. The RAF replaced this three years ago with a new memorial because they said they didn't want to give prominence to an offensive term that went against its ethos. <laughs> this was at the time of the Black Lives Matter disorders in this country. It seems that the RAF were concerned about what they referred to as reputational damage. Idiots. Now, of course, the grave is in difficulties again because the base at RAF Scampton in Lincolnshire, where the grave is to be found, is earmarked for 2,000 illegal immigrants to be housed there and it is unlikely in the extreme that they will be aware of the significance of either the base or the grave of Guy Gibson's dog. It is being suggested that it and the dog's remains be relocated to another RAF base at King's Lynn. All this, the absurd fuss about naming a dog and the fact that the headquarters of the Dam Busters is to be housing illegal immigrants rather than RAF pilots, symbolises and sums up all that is wrong with this country these days. There was a time when every schoolboy in the country had heard of Barnes Wallace and his bouncing bomb, and the film of the Dam Busters was a perennial favourite on the television. It evoked memories of the heroism of the Second World War, and the fact that a dog was given a name that few of us would today choose for our pet was simply a quaint piece of history. It is the fact that Americans find the N-word so offensive, which has led to the extreme sensitivity about its use, which extends now even to the printed form. Newspapers will only print the initial letter, followed by a string of asterisks, a practice once observed only for the vilest of sexual swear words. That the former base of the Dambusters, great heroes in the struggle against Nazi Germany, is to be turned into a camp for men who have crossed the channel and entered the country illegally, is appalling. In the description of this video, I give two links. One is to a news item about the grave of Guy Gibson's dog, and the other, the Ministry of Defence figures for recent crossings of the Channel by small boats. On the 6th, 7th and 8th of May this year, 400 more illegal immigrants arrived in our country. I suppose that this ties in, in an ironic way, with the subject of the Dam Busters Squadron, at one time we had a war office whose chief role was to prevent anybody invading Britain. Now we have a Ministry of Defence whose role seems to be facilitating such an invasion and keeping accurate records of how many invaders arrive each day.